Very good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Vishwajit Bonik, junior resident, Arjikar Medical College. Uh, today, my topic of uh, debate is asymptomatic hyperuricemia, you should treat or not treat. And my opinion on that is asymptomatic hyperuricemia, you should not treat. So what is asymptomatic hyperuricemia? There is no universal definitions of hyperuricemia. The pathological definitions is above the 6.8 milligram per DL serum urate level, but the Japanese has defined as 7 milligram per DL in both genders and all ages. Uh, the causes of the hyperuricemia are mainly the excess purines and the hematological myelopolyphyretive and the lymphopolyphyretive disorders, but the main causes found uh, in hyperuricemia is decreased renal excretions of urate. The another spectrum of hyperuricemia is gout. Gout is nothing but excess urate crystals accumulating in the body fluids that resulting in the inflammatory arthritis. And gout is a most common inflammatory arthritis found prevalent in worldwide. So what is the burden of hyperuricemia and gout? Uh, the National uh, Health and Examination Survey, 2007 and 8, the, uh, they surveyed the prevalence of hyperuricemia and gout in the US. The prevalence of gout is about 3.9% uh, of the total patients and hyperuricemia is 22% of the patients. Uh, the other pre prevalence of the other countries like China is 6% to 25% uh, uh, to in the Taiwan, 10% to 52%. In the Japan, 20 to 26%. Uh, in the US is morally about 22%. So what is the burden of the gout? The burden of the gout is uh, one fifth of the total um, hyperuricemia. Uh, before going to the clinical spectrum of the gout, patients have a long standing history of asymptomatic hyperuricemic state or asymptomatic monosodium urate crystal depositions in the joints. So why all um, hyperuricemic patients does not develop gout? This is an Egyptian journal. And published an article that gout is an old disease with new perspective clearly stated that 5% of the patients of hyperuricemia above 9 mg per DL, uh, DL develop the gout. And according to their thoughts, the reason behind this may be the genetic factors. This published uh, genetic uh, wide association study published in the 2018 Lancet, the study was on normouricemic patients who develop gout. The another one study published in the last year, Annuals of General Rheumatic Diseases, the genetic white study for asymptomatic hyperuricemic patients who develop gout. The genes are mostly linked, uh, linked to ABCG2, uh, SLC2A, or SLC17. So the controversies remain persist. Why some individuals with uh, hyperuricemia develop monosodium urate crystal depositions? Why the deposited crystals can be present without a clinically apparent inflammations? So my friend talk about the criminal nature of the uric, uh, uric acids, but uric acids are role as antioxidants. In humans, over the half of the antioxidant capacity of blood plasma comes from uric acid. Uric acid has a strong reactive oxygen species and par peroxynitrate scavengers. This uric acid antioxidant and antioxidant paradox, antioxidant effects of the uric acid is manifested only in the hydrophilic nature of our body fluids, that is plasma. Uric acid has a role in positive role in beneficial role in endothelial functions in tissue repair. Uh, uric acid is a potent mediator of type 2 immune response that is helpful in allergic asthma and in uh, parasitic infestations. So we all know that uric acid has a beneficial role in uh, movement disorders patients and also role in the multiple sclerosis. In the meta-analysis uh, shows that low serum uric acid levels in the multiple sclerosis and the neuromyelitis optica. And in the Parkinson disease and in the Alzheimer's disease, the same beneficial roles have been found with uric acids. So uric acid is then the next role in uh, autoimmune dermatological conditions. The pemphigus vulgaris and the oral lichen planus has the same beneficial role with uric acids. So what about the guidelines and the recommendations say? The um, American College of Rheumatology, the 2012 guideline, did not address any pharmacological management for the asymptomatic hyperuricemia. The indication for the clear cut the for pharmacological ULT, like any patients with diagnosis of gouty arthritis present to either toughest or frequent attacks, that is more than two or attacks per year, or CKD stage two or st uh, stage two to stage five, or past urolithiasis. The Euler and the British Society of Rheumatology does not recommend um, therapy for the asymptomatic hyperuricemia. But the Japanese guideline say differ. The, for the Japanese guideline, if the serum urate level is more than eight and the complications like renal damage, ISD, and metabolic syndrome are present, they have treated if more than eight. And if these uh, complications are not present, they have treated if more than nine milligram per DL. The Australian and the New Zealand recommendations uh, are same as American guideline. 
it is a uh, multinational evidence based recommendations by systemic review and the expert opinion of the rheumatologist known as 3e initiative clearly stated there is no significant benefit with allopurinol therapy in um, glomerular function rates and creatinine and proteinuria this is another systemic review published in the indian um, published in the journal of rheumatology uh, the pharmacological treatment for the asymptomatic hyperuricemia cannot be recommended at present for any prevention of gouty arthritis, renal disease, and CV events. So what are the known complications of hyperuricemia? Gout, urolithiasis, or acute uric acid nephropathy. So hyperuricemia beyond gout, the controversial complications. The first controversial complications is hyperuricemia with cardiovascular associations. This is an enhanced study. Uh, study population, 5,421 patients. Uh, study was conducted in 1971 to 1987. This clearly shows that there is no association seen between the main patients. This is another study uh, published in the BMJ Heart Journal, the serum urate levels and the risks of uh, major coronary heart diseases. The urate level is not truly uh, independent risk factors for the coronary heart disease and related serum, uh, urate levels appears to be integral uh, cluster of risk factors like insulin resistance syndromes, obesity and triglycerides. This is an oil known study, Farmingham Heart Study, 6,763 patients concluded with that the uric acid does not have a casual role in the development of coronary heart disease. This is ULT therapy and cardiovascular outcome. There are some study which um, studied that uh, no difference in the heart failure or any cardiovascular outcome. This is well known study, heart, um, exact heart failure study. Allopurinol was given to the patients and uh, there is no improvement in the cardiac status, exercise capacity and the qu quality of life of the patients. The hyperuricemia and the renal associations. The MMKD study clearly stated non-diabetic primary CKD did not support primary um, uric acid as independent risk factors. Other study also shows after adjustment of the confounding factors by multiphenyl analysis, uric acid is a no longer estimated as a predictive of indicative of any CKD. These are the, uh, some studies uh, with allopurinol and febuxostat. There is no increase in the EGFR after allopurinol or febuxostat therapy. Uh, so the allopurinol or the BULT therapy with um, hypertension outcome. The study was conducted with febuxostat, with allopurinol, and also this published in India that no significant change in the blood pressures. So allopurinol and the um, cardiovascular risk factors. The, it is a systemic review. Cardiovascular risk factors and the comorbidities with hyperuricemia and gout clearly uh, concluded that stroke incidence and the mortality was not increased with hyperuricemic patients. We all know that hyperuricemia, um, hyperuricemia may be linked to hyperinsulinemia, but the main cause may be insulin resistance and the hyperinsulinemia causes urate reabsorption in the kidney and causes hyperuricemia. So hyperuricemia could be a both consequences or cause of a hyperinsulinemia in the metabolic syndrome. Uh, so our, as a doc, our first target is uh, first uh, do not harm, that is primum non nocere. We all know that the branch bromadon uh, withdraw from the market due to severe liver toxicity and in the next coming days it may be occur with allopurinol or febuxostat. See the allopurinol is known for its uh, cutaneous side effects, spectrum of cutaneous side effects with allopurinol. The most serious one allopurinol induced SGS or TED uh, did the study published in rheumatology journal and 60 to 86 percent patients treated for asymptomatic hyperuricemia and the in um, annual incidence of the allopurinol hypersensitivity is 0.5 percent and the adverse effects are twice in the patient with allopurinol use for the asymptomatic hyperuricemia and it is also concerned for the dermatologist it is published in 2016 with british uh, journal of dermatology that's severe cutaneous adverse reaction due to inappropriate uh, medication use and the inappropriate most common inappropriate drugs are allopurinol and the most common indication is asymptomatic hyperuricemia the other side effects are recurrent meningoencephalitis acalculus cholecystitis and where you go to the FDA website and for the product information, for if you search the allopurinol and febuxostat indication, the first lines written is non-recommended for the treatment of asymptomatic hyperuricemia. So what about febuxostat? Mm, a couple of years ago, we know that febuxostats may be the better for the cardiovascular profile, but uh, after carving NEGM in the 2018 CREAS trial, has increased risk of CV um, death with febuxostats, then with uh, allopurinol. And in, uh, 2019, FDA adds a black box warning for the use of uh, febuxostat. 
This one is 2013 by public, um, this one to, uh, warning notice by French National Drug Safety Agency that asymptomatic hyperuricemia does not indicate allopurinol therapy. And every effort should be made to avoid the prescribing an ULT for a inappropriate indications. So what is the cause for ULT therapy uh, for asymptomatic hyperuricemia? The Mendelian studies does the uh, have failed to confirm that ulate levels with their comorbidities. The risk of benefit ratio of the ULT is not uh, clear. No studies confirms ULT improve as comorbidities. No recommendation except the Japanese. So what do we do with asymptomatic hyperuricemia? At first, the identify cause of um, contributing to the hyperuricemia. The lifestyle factors like alcohol consumption, obesity. So um, there are non-pharmacological interventions like therapeutic lifestyle changes, avoid the strong alcoholic beverages and soft drinks, prefer low-fat carbohydrate, um, low-fat dietary um, products, limit consumption of animal protein and weight loss and physical activity. This article by Dinsar et al. and asymptomatic hyperuricemia when you treat. Because and, uh, hyperuricemia is not a disease. Treatment should be restricted to the sp uh, specific circumstances and it may be um, um, receiving chemotherapy or radiotherapy, have a patient having kidney stones with recurrent uh, uric acid nephrolithiasis, uh, patients with history of gouty attacks, and patients having exceptionally high level of hyperuricemia. So in summary, no guidelines recommended ULT in the asymptomatic hyperuricemia except Japan guideline. Direct link with the cardiovascular and the renal com comorbidities is hard to prove. Limited data on the efficacy of the non-gout diseases of the ULT drugs. Adequately powered clinical trials and clinically relevant endpoints are required, especially focusing on the CV death, uh, CV and the renal. So the urate lowering therapy for the asymptomatic hyperuricemia cannot be supported at present conditions. Thank you. So uh, I would request Dr. Uddalok, I'll give him two minutes, because he dwelt pri primarily on the CAD aspect while Dr. Bonick has talked on protective effects of uric acid. So he gets two minutes to take the challenge. So time for rebuttal. Uh, so from my side, uh, I have shown whether I would like to uh, change it to rather pre-symptomatic hyperuricemia. We are, uh, I've shown several evidences regarding meta-analysis, observational studies, and many other studies, RCTs, which have shown conclusive evidence that hyperuricemia is linked with cardiovascular mortality, be it hypertension, be it atrial fibrillation, be it any sort of uh, cardiovascular uh, side effects like ischemic heart disease and all. So this masterly inactivity of not doing anything and waiting for the fire to catch you compared to using the fire extinguishing may be um, disastrous for us in the long run. Next, uh, we are always looking for an independent association. Why that so? Because we are thinking that hyperuricemia will lead to CVD and it may be mediated by hypertension. This independent association may be harmful for us because many studies will miss that hyperuricemia is causing hypertension, that is causing a cardiovascular mortality. If we uh, limit this to only the independent association, we may miss a very dependable association as well. Now, there's a lot of reasons about the discrepancies because uh, definition of hyperuricemia can vary from study to study and differences in adjustment of certain covariates in the statistical analysis. Coming to the very famous Framingham Heart Study as told by my opponent, well, most of the participants were white and this was extremely applicable to European data rather than all other data and there were certain other limitations as well. This was the limitation of exact heart failure which was limited to only 24 weeks for her exact heart failure trial. And you have to take uh, the um, care trial with a pinch of salt because the dropout rate was around 60%, one of the highest dropout rates in uh, cardiovascular mortality trial. So the, I do not deny the fact of uh, incidence of irrational use of uh, urate lowering therapy for the skin side effects. So right now we are waiting for a paradigm shift in the change in the guidelines. And I always believe a stitch in, nine will save time, stitch in time will save nine actually. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Bodik, if you have something to say, please restrict for two, within two minutes. So, time for cerebral. According to the uh, Japanese guideline, let's see the Japanese guideline says, in the Japanese guideline, there is some disclaimer. And then the disclaimer that shows that there are no interventional studies considering for the complications. That's the complications for the treatment of the asymptomatic hyperuricemia. And when my uh, friends presents the RCTs, the RCTs are simple sizes like 30, 40, 45, and in the uh, 
systemic review and the meta analysis there is some con uh, confounding factors and this is also present in the uh, hyperuricemia and the coronary heart disease so this is after the care study febuxostat and the cardiovascular events the systemic review and meta analysis this also shows that increases of cv death with patients with gout this is a uh, hyper no ckd study it is a no ckd study is uh, observational study how can observational study ca can uh, told that hyperuricemia and cause uh, ckd the discrepancy of uh, hyperuricemia as variably defined hyperuricemia can be cause of the consequences of the comorbidities observational study cannot provide proof of casualty sample size are small and the statistical powers limited in the randomized control trials of the ults so furthermore no data exist on the potential effects of the genetic polymorphism urate uh, related uh, biological mechanisms so we know we all know that in the 1980s we believe that uh, uric acid is a innocent bystander so watching crime from the neighbor uh, but in recent days as my friend told and the many systemic review told that it is a play a central playmaker so large randomized control trials are required for fixation of the primary endpoints uh, mainly on the cv and the renal outcomes and ult therapies with the focus on these comorbidities so for this time beings according to the recent guidelines and the recent trials asymptomatic hyperuricemia should be recommended